Welcome to Calvary. 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 Welcome to Calvary Baptist Church. Hey, Calvary, Pastor Ken is here with you once again. I am indeed blessed just to be here. I'm blessed uh, just to be back into the building. I'm blessed uh, just to be alive. It's such a blessing to be alive after all that we have seen and all that we continue to see. I, I continue to think about those who were in that condo uh, building in uh, Surfside, Florida. Uh, one day, that uh, one moment, and they are standing in the next moment. They're no longer here. One moment that they are breathing, maybe having a good time. Next moment, they are fighting for their lives. Uh, one moment, they are actually maybe having a conversation. And the next moment, they're screaming and crying out uh, for help. So we don't know uh, what the next moment is going to be. But I know, I feel in my heart, in my mind, in my spirit that I'm talking to just a few believers in here that know that if it had not been for the Lord on your side, and you don't know where you would be. And you are grateful. You are indeed grateful uh, just to be here, just to be alive. If you're glad to be alive, won't you drop that into the comment section? Won't you say, yes, I'm glad to be alive. Lift up your hands, clap your hands, whatever you want to do. Say, you know what? I'm just glad to be alive. Uh, we know that it could be indeed another way. And so I am so grateful just to be here. I'm so grateful just to be, uh, uh, so I'm grateful for that. Uh, this is indeed the day that the good Lord has made. We ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Won't you magnify the Lord with me? Won't you make the name of the Lord great in this place? We are excited to have another opportunity to worship our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Won't you prepare your heart and your mind for worship? as you have already been called to worship, let's enter in a space of worship now. God bless you.
Good morning, Calvary. I will be reading from Psalm 138, and it talks about God's goodness for those who are faithful. And it reads as follows. I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and will praise your name for your unfailing love and your faithfulness, for you have so exalted your solemn decree that it surpasses your fame. When I called you, answered me. You greatly emboldened me. May all the kings of the earth praise you, Lord, when they hear what you have decreed. May they sing of the ways of the Lord, for the glory of the Lord is great. Though the Lord is exalted, he looks kindly on the lowly. Though lofty, he sees them from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the anger of my foes. With your right hand, you save me. The Lord will vindicate me. Your love, Lord, endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hand. May the Lord add the richest blessing to the hearing, reading, and application of his holy word. Amen. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, thou who sits high and looks low, Lord, we thank you for watching over us each and every day. We thank you, Lord, for you are a God of miracles. We thank you, Lord, for your grace, for your mercy, for your love. We thank you, Lord, for your word that we will continue to try to learn and do the things that you would have us to do. We pray each day we are more and more like you, that we will continue to grow. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings you have bestowed upon us. We magnify you. We glorify you. We love you, Lord. We pray that we will do what is pleasing in your sight, Lord. And we pray that you will give us strength and give us mercy and give us grace when we fall short, as we know we will. But we will try, Lord, to get back up every time we fall. It doesn't matter how many times we fall, as long as we keep on getting up, Lord, and keep on trying to live life as you would have us do. We thank you, Lord, for blessing people with good health, Lord. We ask you to hear our prayers about those in need of changes in health, Lord, in relationships, in um, jobs, Lord, in financial situations, uh, in mental situations, Whatever the situations may be, Lord, you know exactly what each one it is, spoken or unspoken, Lord. We, you know every desire, every thought that we have, Lord. We just ask you to continue to be with us. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for a family of believers that we are in community with, Lord, that will help us, Lord, to remember always that you love us, that you are always there for us, Lord. We just praise you, O oh Lord, for the power of prayer. We ask you, Lord, to continue to bless our pastor and his family, Lord, in what they are going to do, Lord, for your church, Lord, and in their lives, Lord, in their uh, private lives as well, Lord. We just ask you, Lord, to continue to watch over us each and every day, Lord, bless our families, bless our loved ones, bless our government, bless people all over the world, Lord, that um, hopefully are coming to know you, Lord. And we ask you, Lord, to bring an end to this virus that so many have succumbed to, Lord. We just thank you because it could have been us, Lord. We just praise you and ask your continued blessings in the name of your Son, Jesus. Hallelujah and Amen.
Hey, Calvary, Pastor Ken is here with you once again. I'm excited about what God uh, has for you today. Uh, as we continue in this series uh, on freedom, I pray that the first and the second part, uh, that it has blessed you and that you will continue to be blessed throughout this month. Uh, let us pray. Our Father and our God, we just want to tell you thank you. I thank you, Lord, for allowing us to see a new day. Thank you, God, for your strength. Thank you, Lord, for your power. God, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. Lord, where would we be without your grace? And where would we be without your mercy? God, I pray at this moment in time that you would strengthen me, that you would use me as your vessel. Lord, use my words to help someone on this journey. God, I can't do anything without you. So God, I need you to drop me down into the storehouse of knowledge, and give me preaching power once more and again. God, this is your servant asking for your help in this moment and this time. And I know that you are able to answer. So I pray that you will. God, is in your son's name we do pray. Amen. Well, let's journey over to an Old Testament book of Numbers. And I want to revisit this passage of scripture again um, as we begin to talk about freedom. Uh, Numbers chapter 13, beginning at verse 25 from the English Standard Version. It reads like this. At the end of 40 days, they returned from spying out the land. And they came to Moses and Aaron, to all the congregation of the people of Israel in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh. They brought back word to them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. They told him, we came to the land to which you sent us. It flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. However, the people who dwell in the land are strong, and the cities are fortified, very large. And besides, we saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the Negev. The Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the hill country and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the Jordan. But Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and occupy it for we are well able to overcome it. Then the men who gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we are. I want to stop right there. I want to try to read it from the message translation and it reads like this. They presented themselves before Moses and Aaron and the whole congregation of the people of Israel in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh. They reported to the whole congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. Then they told the story of their trip. We went up to the land to which you sent us, and oh, it does flow with milk and honey. Just look at this fruit. The only thing is that the people who live there are fierce. Their cities are huge and well fortified. Worse yet, we saw the descendants of Anak, of the giant Anak. <clears throat> Amalekites are spread out in the Negev. Hittites, Jebusites, and Amorites hold the hill country, and the Canaanites are established by, on the Mediterranean Sea and along the Jordan. Caleb interrupts, calls for silence before Moses and said, let's go up and take the land now. We can do it. But the other said, we can't attack those people they're way stronger than we are. They spread real scary rumors among the people. They said, we scouted out the land for one end to the other. It's a land that swallows people up. Everybody we saw was huge. I want to stop right there for a few moments until you're hearing. I want to preach from this title, Free Your Mind. Free your mind. Free 
your mind. Uh, I can recall as a youngster, and I'm pretty sure I'm probably telling my age, uh, hanging out with my older cousins, and maybe you didn't have older cousins like I did, but I had some really fun uh, older cousins that allowed me to do things that my parents would not allow me to do. You know those type type of cousins that, or the cool cousins that had all of the up-to-date stuff that went to places that you know you were not able to go and listen to stuff that you know that you were not able to listen to. Maybe I'm just speaking, and I could be, maybe I'm just speaking from my particular uh, narrative as a church kid. Uh, my parents didn't allow me to see everything, uh, <laughs> and I could not listen to everything. I can recall uh, very clearly and vividly now uh, that, you know, that gangster rap stuff uh, was not to be played in our house. Uh, we were church-going kids, and so therefore, uh, if I was going to listen to music like that, it was not going to be in the young household. It was going to be outside of the Young's household. And so I had older cousins who were into uh, this particular type of music and was into all kinds of things that was outside the parameters in which I was able to play in and even hear it in and live in. And so it was always exciting to be able to stay at my older's, uh, older cousin's house or they had to babysit us and, and because they were able to do, and they had this type of freedom that I did not have. They had this type of freedom that I did not have. I said again that they had this type of freedom uh, that I did not have. And so they were able to do some things that I could not do. And to be honest, be very honest, sometimes they just drug me along for the ride. And, and to this day, I appreciate uh, some of those experiences. I, I don't know if you ever had uh, those experiences where you were able to hang out or be around older siblings or able to be around older family members and they gave you an experience that you know that you would not have gotten in your own household. And they did some things you know that you could not do uh, in your own household or, or your parents said, you know, you can't go there. You can't go here. You can't go to these places, but when you're hanging out with your older siblings or with your older uh, family members, sometimes they drag you along to some places that you know that you normally would not go. So I remember uh, seeing this group uh, called In Vogue. Uh, this group called In Vogue, uh, they, they would sing this song. I remember very uh, vividly and very clearly in my mind to this day. I remember what they were wearing is this black these four women wearing this black and they seemed to be very cool and, and they would sing the song. They would say, free your mind and the rest will follow. Free your mind. Free, free your mind and the rest will follow. They began to sing this and they had a cool uh, uh, a lick, a jazz lick and, and, and a cool uh, uh, pop uh, lick to it and, 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 and the, the, the the music sounded really good and it was catchy and, and people would begin to sing that free your mind and the rest will follow. They had a, a, a hook to it that people can still remember to this day. I'm sure I'm speaking to some folks who remember seeing uh, In Vogue and seeing how popular they were in the early 90s and understanding what this song did for their career. But when I began to think about these words, free your mind and the rest will follow. This is exactly what we have to do as Christians because the truth of the matter is freedom is what we attain when we are in Jesus Christ, when we are in God's word, as I said last week. But a lot of us are free physically, but we are in shackled or in chains in our mind. We are enslaved in our mind. Free your mind and the rest will follow. Free your mind. Isn't it amazing that a lot of us will not achieve what we want because we can't free our mind? Isn't it amazing that a lot of us who are physically free, we can do whatever we want to do, but we're not able to reach the pinnacle of our lives because we're not able to free our mind. See, this sense of freedom in our mind uh, allows the body to do exactly what it needs to do. But when your mind says no, your body says no. Free your mind and the rest will follow. Uh, I don't want to trouble you long, but I just believe that God has called us not to be uh, 
chained and bound, uh, not just uh, physically. He wants us to be free physically, but I believe he wants us to be free mentally as well as spiritually. When we look at this text, I'm tasked to teach you today. As I said, I want to look at this once again, and I want to take another spin at this because I believe there's another side to this text. That when we look at this text, we see that there are some people who have been physically free, but they are still mentally and spiritually chained and bound. Here it is. We're talking about the children of Israel. We know the story. I hope that you know it by now that God sends Moses. God sends a deliverer to set them free. Been chained, been bound, been enslaved all this long time for centuries. Now God finally sends a deliverer to set them free. They are now free. They have been able to leave Egypt, able to leave Pharaoh in Egypt, able to leave and not leave with anything or leave empty-handed. They leave with their hands full. They leave with animals. They leave with clothing. They leave with things. God blesses them as they are departing from Pharaoh. And you know the story. Pharaoh says, I have to go after them. His heart is hardened. He said, I have to go after them. I can't allow them to do me like this. God opens up a Red Sea. He allows them to go through the Red Sea. And, and they go through the Red Sea. And when they get on the other side of the sea, uh, Moses closes up. God, through God, closes up the Red Sea. God closes up the Red Sea after Moses uh, follows the directions from God. Closes up the Red Sea and he sees Pharaoh and his army uh, floating, floating on the water. The text says that people you see now, you'll no longer see them again or you'll see them no longer. He takes them through the wilderness. He, he takes them through the wilderness. He, he rains down manna from heaven. He, he rains down, he allows them to have quail to eat. He takes good care of them. And while they are in the wilderness, they continue to complain, complain, and complain. You know some of the complaints. Why would Moses take us out of here? We don't have water to drink. Why would Moses take us out of Egypt and we don't have food to eat? Why would Moses do this and it's hot outside? Why would Moses do this? We, we, he brought us out here to die out here in the wilderness when we had at least we had food to eat in Egypt. Yeah, we would have been working, but we had food to eat. Yeah, we know, we know we are free now, but at least we had a hut or a house to stay in. Yeah, we know that we are free, but we don't have anywhere to really go. But even in Egypt, the Pharaoh took better care of us than what we are experiencing right here. Can you imagine that? They are physically free, but they are mentally chained. They are spiritually bound by what they once had. And have you ever been there that you have been uh, bound by what you once had? Nostalgia is a heck of a drug. It'll have you sitting in, in what God has blessed you with, which is the present, and God is going to continue to bless you with, which is the future. It'll have you sitting in your present upset because you're not tasting what the past once was. You know some of those folks. Oh, well, it used to be like this. And when I was growing up, we had the best in our neighborhood. And when, when I was growing up, the school system did this for us. When, when I was growing up, the food tasted like this. And when I was growing up, and kids didn't do this. And when I was growing up, we didn't dress like this. We did this. People always looking back instead of understanding the moment that they're in and asking God to bless them in the future, you are indeed enshackled and chained in your mind. Free your mind. The rest will follow. I wish that could actually take place in our churches. I know a lot of us are struggling with this because we can't free our mind to think outside of what once was. We can't free our mind to think about what God is going to do in the future. We can't free our mind to think about what God is actually doing right now. A lot of us are saying, you know what, I can't wait to get back into the building, open up my hymnal and be able to sing uh, one of the hymns. I can't wait to go back to the way it used to be. I can't wait to go and follow the old structures. I can't 
can't wait. And God is saying, maybe you need to free your mind and see what I'm doing. Won't you free your mind and see that I'm uh, spreading the gospel in a different way? Won't you free your mind and understand that I'm bigger than your structures? Won't you free your mind and understand that I'm bigger than all of your traditions? Won't you free your mind and then the rest will follow? You should be following after Jesus and following after God and following after the Holy Spirit and following after God's holy word. And that's the issue in this text. Instead of following God, they are chained and bound in their mind. Listen to the text. God promised them this land that is flowing with milk and honey. They are here. They are able to taste and experience this land that's flowing with milk and honey. Text tells us, verse 27 says, And they told him, We came to the land of which you sent us. It flows with milk and honey, and this is the fruit. This is them holding up the fruit. We, we're not just going to tell you something. We're going to actually show you something. We want to show you an example of what we have experienced. We want you to have that same type of experience. We want you to taste something because hopefully when you taste something, it'll unlock something up here that allow you to move forward. That's the reason why we always have taste tests. That's the reason why. I, I never forget. I sent it in one of my meetings uh, when I when I worked as a manager at, at, at Kroger, and they said, "You know what? We put we put uh, candy at the end of the shopping experience because we want you to have a we want our customers to have an impulse buy that they can't leave without having this type of sugar." And they also said, uh, when you walk throughout the store, uh, most of a prime time, uh, 4 to 7 or early in the morning, in particular 4, four to 7, we want you to either be cooking uh, some fried chicken or some type of chicken and put that aroma in the air. Or uh, uh, baking some type of bread or, uh, or baking some type of cookies and put that aroma in the air. Because when customers smell that, it says something to them in their mind that they at least need to come and see what you're doing. And they would say, when they come to see what you're doing, give them a test, taste of what you, or what, what you are doing so that they can at least test and taste what you've been cooking or what you're cooking at the current time. And then that will prompt them to buy. Really, it's all a mental game that when you go into the grocery store, there's certain things that set a certain type of way to play with your mind to tell you that you can't leave that store without having a taste of it or at least testing it. And when you test it, it reels you in to buy it. And what they are trying to do is open up their mind. They're trying to free their minds and say, just taste what God has shown us. Just taste the goodness of the Lord. And they taste it, and they're still so bound that they shut down the whole argument. Have you been there? You want to be free. You've allowed, to be you've allowed yourself the opportunity to taste God's goodness. God has blessed you with a job, and God has given you another opportunity for an increase at your next job. But you are so frightened to leave this job, to go to what is a uh, come up um, because you are afraid of, of leaving what you know. Have you ever been like that? So bound by, by your zip code, so bound by your area code that you cannot leave out of your area code because you know your area code, you know your zip code, and God will allow you to experience things outside of your community, outside of your area code, outside of your region, and God will open up a door for you, but you're saying, you know what, God, I can't go through that door because I'm too afraid. That's a mental thing, that, that, you, that you're too afraid, and God is pushing you and pressing you to do what he's called you to do, and you ask God, you've been praying all day and all night, you've been on your knees, you've been soliciting others to pray on your behalf, and instead of answering God, you say no to what God is doing in your life because you are not free. You're not free in your mind. Here it is. They show up them the nice fruit. Say, here it is, won't you taste it? And then they say it right here in the text. 
Well, we see all of these folks. Amalekites are here. Hittites, Jebusites, Amorites, they all here. Canaanites down there. And Caleb says, everybody needs to be quiet. See, here it is. When you're in a congregation, I want you to hear this. When you're in a congregation or when you're around people, you ought to have some Caleb's and some Joshua's that will say, you know what? I hear all of the negative stuff, but I need just two or three people who are free enough to say, you know, we just going to believe in God. We're going to believe what God is saying. We're going to believe in what God is doing. We're going to stand up and hush the crowd and say, no, God said we can do it. And I believe what God is saying. We're going to free ourselves from our past. We're going to free ourselves from where we are right now and press towards the mark of the high calling in Christ. We're going to press towards what is in our future. We're going to press in to what God is doing right now. We're going to press in to what God is going to do. I just need some Caleb's and Joshua's and, and some, 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 some uh, other Caleb's and Joshua's to stand up and say, you know what? No, we're going to listen to what God is saying. Caleb, Joshua, Calebina, and maybe uh, Josina stood up and said, you know what? We, we can do this because God said we can do it. They were free enough to believe in God. They had experienced God enough to know that God was able to do exactly what he said he was going to do. Listen to them. Listen to the people who were bound. They said, no, we can't do it. Because the, the, uh, the uh, people from Anak, they are in the land. The sons of Anak are in the land. They're giants. You heard the message translations. The cities are big. Oh, they're so big. And oh, they're so fortified. And the people in the land, they'll just swallow you up. You're so bound that you can't see. See, sometimes it's not, it's not that the stuff is not in front of you. It's just that you can't see the stuff the right way. That your, your vision is distorted. That you, you're so mentally chained that your vision becomes distorted. Have you ever uh, been around someone who, who can see things and put things together? I was talking to a real estate, uh, uh, someone who worked in the real estate industry. They said to me, they said, listen, in order for something to be sold, people have to have vision. They have to be able to see what living here would be like. This is one reason why they would uh, put staging in the house. This person said to me, uh, the reason why we put staging in is because people have trouble seeing things if it's not there. All I'm trying to tell you is that a lot of us, we have trouble seeing things because we are so bound mentally. And when we are bound mentally, it messes up our vision. And God is saying on today that I want you to free your mind. I want you to know that freedom is in me. That I won't just free you physically, but I'll free you mentally. And I'll free you spiritually so that you can see everything that I'm trying to show you. That you don't need anything any age. And when you see this thing that I'm calling you to, you won't say what others are saying. I believe the Clark sister said it like this. You gotta see it before you see it or you never will see it. And here it is in this text. He's saying I've allowed you to taste it. I've allowed you to see it. And all you got to do is to follow me. And God is saying to somebody in here, he's allowed you to taste some things. He's allowed you to see some things. And all you got to do is say, you know what, God? Give me a peace of mind. Give me peace in my mind. Lord, allow me to be free in my mind and in my heart and in my spirit so that I can follow what you are showing me. God, I can block out all the naysayers. I can mute all those who are talking negative. I just want to hear and see you. And God, I want you to minister to me so much so that even if there are giants in the land, that when I come walking in, I don't 
care what folks have to say. I don't care what giants are doing. I know that you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they continue to comfort me, that you cover me, that you have a, a shield before me, and that you will take care of my enemies. I believe somebody's in here that knows that you understand what freedom is all about, that when you walk up in the room, you don't care what's going on because you know God called you to be there. Is there anybody in here that knows that when God has you, you don't worry about anything. You will stand up just like Caleb and Joshua and say, let's go get what's ours. And I believe I'm talking to just a few folks in here that can say, I'm ready. I'm ready to receive everything that you have for me. My hands are lifted up. My heart is ready to receive whatever you have for me. If you free your mind, the rest will indeed follow. Can you imagine that? What would have happened in this text if they would have freed their minds? They could have experienced this land that was flowing with milk and honey. Free your mind. Allow God to free your mind. Ask God to take the shackles off of your mind so he can show you what freedom is all about. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we just want to tell you thank you. I thank you, Lord, for what you are indeed showing us. God, free our hearts, free our minds. God, we don't want to just be physically free. God, help us to be mentally free. We want freedom in you. God, we love you. We praise you. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Hey, Calvary, Ken, Pastor Ken is here once again. Uh, I hope and pray that you've uh, been blessed by the service, blessed by the word of God. Um, I just want to thank everyone who uh, came out last week to our outdoor worship service experience. I was excited just to be outside, and we had a baptism uh, for the first time in almost whew, 16 months, I believe. Um, so we were excited about that, and for those who are in home worship, we thank God for you. I do know that on August 1st, August 1st, the first day of August, we're going to be right outside again. Uh, we're going to have a tent, so there's no excuses for everybody who's saying it's too hot. Uh, there's going to be a tent out for people who want to sit under the tent and enjoy some shade. Uh, I really appreciate the layout. And we're going to have baptism again. So. If you want to be baptized, you don't have to be a member of this church, but you said you're going to confess that you believe in uh, Jesus Christ being your Lord and Savior, and you want to be baptized. You want to make this a uh, significant experience. Uh, you want to make this significant move, uh, not just for you, but for the people to see that something inside of you has happened. And this is an inward change. Um, this is an outward expression. And so you want to show folks that something inside of you has happened uh, and that you want to become committed to life, uh, committed to life in Christ. And so there may be somebody who wants to recommit your life to Christ. You've been baptized before. Maybe it happened when you was a young girl and you've been baptized before. And you say, you know what? Now I actually know what I'm supposed to be living. And this pandemic has taught me a whole lot. I want to recommit my life. I need to have a baptism experience. If you want to do that, I want you to contact our admin, uh, ad, admin at Calvary uh, Baptist-Haverhill.org and she can get all your contact information and pass it along to our diaconate ministry. Uh, so we're just excited about that. So that's August 1st at 11 a.m. If you want to be outside, we're going to have baptism outside once again. And if you want to be in home, you can stay at home. We're going to make sure that we have worship just for you as well. And so once again, I thank everyone who came last week. And we want to thank everybody again for those who came and it was a part of the Relationship Summit. God bless you. I've heard some of your comments. And I heard a lot of you saying, we want to do this again, Pastor. Uh, Y'all pray for me and, and pray with the leadership as we think about how we can retool and, and do this again. The last thing I want to share with you before we go um, into our GPS 
is that I want you to be in prayer about coming back into the church. Hey, it's almost September. And we're trying to do our best. We, our safety team has, has come up with plans to, to come back inside of the church building. Uh, if you want to come back in, uh, there's going to be a survey um, that we're going to be putting out very soon. Uh, might be this week or the week after. But there's going to be a survey. We would just want to hear from you and hear how many people who say they want to come back into the building so we can try to make sure that we are prepared. Um, because next thing we know, it will indeed be September. And Lord's willing, we pray that everything is good, that people have been vaccinated, and that our vaccination rate is higher than what it is now. Um, the recent uh, stat that I saw that it was 50% of African Americans have at least had one uh, vaccination, uh, one vaccination dosage, I guess. And then, uh, you know, people of uh, Hispanic, uh, Latinx community, I was like it was 49%. And so we are lagging behind, uh, people of color are lagging behind uh, for whatever reason. I'm not here to push it on you. Just know that it'll be better for uh, your community uh, if you believe in uh, science uh, that to get the vaccination. So, uh, if you have questions about that, contact us and we can try to push you and point you in the right direction. Um, last thing, we go by our spiritual GPS here, at Calvary Baptist Church. Uh, G is for giving. We need you to continue to give. We have some things that we have to do uh, here at church. We have to uh, make sure that we get cameras and you haven't seen them yet, but we got to get the lights in and you haven't seen them yet, but we have to get shades in. And so we ask, we ask, we ask uh, that you will continue uh, to give. Um, those are some expenses that we are in going to incur uh, just to get back in to make sure that whether folks feel comfortable coming back into the building or feel comfortable staying at home. In this season, we have to prepare for whatever's going to come. I'm asking you to be very flexible. Um, I want you to be flexible. Uh, my kids love to play with uh, putty. And, and, and so when you get putty in your hand, putty can be formed in a lot of different ways. It can be transformed into a lot of different things. And so I'm just asking that you kind of be like that putty, that you be flexible, you know, um, because we don't know what the future is going to hold. And we pray that everything uh, continues to be the way it is now, but we don't know if this Delta variant is going to flare up and we have to shut down again. We hope that that is not the case. But I'm praying that you will be flexible and that you will continue to give so that we can continue to offer ministry and do the work that God called us to do. So you can give in three different ways here at Calvary. You can give through our website. You can give through an own uh, smartphone application called Givelify, or you can give through checks and money. So if you want to give a uh, cold green cash, uh, just let uh, administrative know, uh, administrative know, and maybe we can find a, a diaconate or trustee could be here to make sure that we're able to accept that. And then the other piece that it is, you can always send it, send it, check, money order, send it to our P.O. Box 781, Hayward, Massachusetts, 01830. And so we pray that you would give so we can uh, continue to do the work that God has called us to do here in the Merrimack Valley and beyond. Um, P is for praying. Hey, we can't get here and do God's work without communing with God. And so collectively, we need to commune. As a church body, we have to commune with God and seek God's face. Individually, you need to commune to see what God is doing in your life and what you want, what God wants you to continue to do or not to do. And maybe some things you say, you know, you don't need to do that any longer. Uh, that's the wrong way. Don't go that way. Uh, but you have to pray. You have to commune with God. And so I said this before, prayer is a, a vertical thing. You praying to God. But prayer is also a horizontal thing. It helps you with people that's around you. Maybe you're praying for people. Maybe you're interceding on behalf of people. So, you know, prayer is a, is a communal thing. You're able to communicate with God and God is able to communicate back with you. And so P is for praying. S is for serving. I was so excited to see so many people uh, help out last week. Uh, you served and you served well and we 
are working through a lot of different things because again, we have to be flexible. Uh, normally we would have, uh, you know, things on, on the parking lot side, but because we had the tent, we had to move it to our green side. You were flexible and I thank God for that and that you will continue to serve not only this church, but we will continue to serve people outside of these four walls. And so we pray that you would uh, go by this GPS. G is for giving, P is for praying, S is for serving. I hope and pray um, that all is well with you, that God continues to cover you, that his grace and his mercy will continue to overtake you. God bless you and keep you. As always, my prayer, be blessed. Thank you.